Welcome to EDA Playground Verilog Tutorials. My name is Victor. I'm the creator of EDA Playground. Today we're going to be covering the always at event and wait statements. So let's start with always. Basically always creates an infinite loop that always always executes as the name implies. For example, always and then I'm going to do create a sequential statement and this is going to execute forever and ever and ever. I'm going to say display in always and I'm going to put a delay just to make sure we the time proceeds. Um, always is in contrast to the initial block because the initial block executes only once. So in the initial block I'm going to control how long this uh, simulation actually executes. So let's run it for uh, 10 time ticks and after that I'll finish it. Uh, so let's run this sim. As you can see it always executes 10 times because there's only 10, 10 time units and it just keeps on going and going and going. So that's the basic always statement. So most of the time you're gonna see always with an add statement. So an add statement basically adds edge triggered control to the always block. So you, you let me let me create a couple signals here. Let's do a reg called changes and a reg called clock. So oftentimes you're gonna see something like this. Always at pause edge clock begin and and then inside there's going to be some some logic but in this case we're just going to add a display here um, display let's say add clock at pause edge clock at uh, and then we're going to record the time here with dollar time. Now this statement will always execute when the clock hits a positive edge. Now you might see, you might think these are different statements, always at pause edge and always begin, but actually they're the same thing. Effectively what we're doing is we're moving this pause edge clock outside this begin and end. Alternatively, it could be inside, it could look like this, at posage clock, and then we can have another nested sequential statement inside like this. So these, these two statements are identical. Alright, so for the time being, let's just, uh, let's just keep the first one, and I'm going to create another always block, so instead of always at pause edge, I'm gonna create an always add changes. So this add statement triggers only on an edge. So in this case the add will only trigger the pause edge while here add will trigger at any any edge of the signal changes. So let's do begin end and then I'll do a similar display statement here just so we see what happens. Always add changes and then I'm going to record the value of the changes changes and the time as well um, alright so let's create some stimulus here so we see what's going on let's uh, delay the simulation start by five time ticks and then we're going to clear these two changes zero clock zero and um, now we're going to play around with the changes a bit so we're going to do after a delay of 5 we're going to change the changes to 1 and after another delay of 5 we're going to change the changes to 0 and now we're going to do the same thing for the clock delay of 5 clock equals 1 delay of 5 clock equals 0 um, I think that's fine that should work let's go ahead and run this simulation and just see what the text output is okay so as we can see the changes change, uh, fire three times. First one it changed to zero over here. Now the reason this fired is because initially by default changes is X. 
So it changed to zero here and it fired. It changed to one here, it fired again, and it changed to zero here and it fired again. This contrast with the clock, which only fires at the positive edge, and the positive edge only happened over here. And we can confirm this by running this through waves. So let's dump the waves. Dump wars. Let's just do the scope of test. So you see the changes changed one, two, three times, and it fired three times, while the pause edge clock went positive edge at 20. Um, okay, so that's the basic uh, basic functionality of the add statement. Now let's move on to an event. So unlike unlike the add statement here, uh, this could be problematic because you know it fires at every edge, and um, and you you might want to have something uh, a little bit easier to use, a little bit more control. So uh, Verilock has an event statement, and I'm going to demonstrate it with some code. Let's create an event. Event my event. And event is basically something you trigger, and then you can use an at block to effectively catch that event and do something based on the triggering of the event. Uh, so let's do an always another always at here. Always at my event begin end, and then we're gonna display display at my event at a certain time and then let's let's trigger the event let's trigger it down here so the way you trigger an event is with this arrow my event so this will trigger an event so I'll trigger it once and then after 10 times um, ticks I'll trigger it again so I'm going to trigger the my event twice over here. Okay, so let's run it and make sure the output is as expected. Okay, let's run it. All right, we see um, my my event fired at 25, uh, which is over here, and then again at 35. So the event only fires um, when with this with this uh, this arrow. And then once it fires, the this display statement displayed, and we can see it down here. Now, if we open up in waves, actually, you're not you won't be able to see the event change in waves. Uh, it's just going to be a single line, so uh, you cannot view the event in waves. So that's one of the downsides of using the event. All right, let's move on to the wait statement. The wait statement is a kind of a counterpart of the at statement. So uh, for the at we triggered on an edge however for the weight it triggers only on the level so let me give you an example let's do another always block that runs forever and here we're gonna have an await statement so we're gonna wait on the changes and as you recall um, in here we trigger on the edge of the changes here we're gonna trigger on the level so it's gonna trigger on the level of one and then every time we trigger, we're going to display a statement. Display weight changes. Then we're going to display the value. I'm just going to copy and paste it from before. And we're going to delay this a little bit because we don't want it to be um, running in an infinite loop. All right, let's run this. Okay, as you can see, we can, the weight change is fired a bunch of times. So here at the edge of one changes, um, the add statement fired. And then because changes were one, the weight statement continued to fire as long as changes were one. So uh, in the waves, you see the changes are one from 10 to 15. So we basically started firing at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, etc. Uh, so that's how the wait statement work. Now I uh, demonstrate these all separately, but you know, for the final example, I'm going to combine all of these into a single, um, single block.
So I'm going to do another initial and it's possible to have as many initial and as many as always blocks as you want. Now of course recall that initial blocks should only be used in the test bench and they are not synthesizable. So in this initial block, uh, first I'm going to wait for the changes and this is going to fire the first time changes becomes 1. Then I'm going to wait for the pause edge of the clock and then I'm going to wait for the um, my event. Of course I'm saying wait. Uh, what I'm implying is uh, I'm waiting for an edge here. So this is basically wait for an edge um, type of statement. And then finally I'm just going to do a display arrived at a certain time and let's see, let's see if this works. Okay, arrived at 25. So we know that uh, you know everything executed expected and we got there at, at 25 we got to this point at time 25 okay this concludes uh, this tutorial thank you for watching